how should we define differentiability of a multivariable function? Well, if you've seen the previous video in this Calculus 3 playlist, the video on partial derivatives, you might think that we've already got an answer. Partial derivatives are the higher dimensional analog of the derivative back in single variable calculus. But unfortunately, it's not quite so simple. And in this video, I really want to explore why, why we need something more than partial derivatives. So we're gonna see an example where we're gonna talk about continuity. And continuity is a very important property that a function can have. We're gonna talk about whether they have partial derivatives and what the relationship between continuity and partial derivatives is. And then we're gonna see that we're actually gonna need an entirely new concept, one that we're gonna call differentiability that is separate from just having partial derivatives. And so that final answer about differentiability we're actually going to introduce in the next video in this multivariable calculus series. Now, before we dive into the multivariable situation, let me just briefly remind you of what was going on in single variable calculus so that we have something to compare to. Now, in single variable calculus, there was this very important relationship that if you had a discontinuity of a function, then the function was not differentiable. And then the contrapositive of that statement is that if you have a differentiable function, it had to be continuous. And an example that kind of illustrates this point is, well, the step function, the function that's zero when x is less than zero and one when x is greater than or equal to zero. This just, well, looks like this. It looks like a little step. Now, it's clearly not continuous at the point x equal to zero. There's this jump at x equal to zero but nor is it differentiable at x equal to zero. If you think of what the derivative did, it was trying to put a tangent line on at some particular point. But how could you ever put a tangent line to the curve at the value of x equal to zero? And so this example was one such example where it was neither continuous nor differentiable. But look what happens in sort of the higher dimensional analog of this exact same function. So we're talking about multivariable calculus now. And the function we're going to talk about looks superficially very similar. It's zero for x, y not being equal to zero, and then one for x, y equaling zero. x, y equaling zero is just saying either x is zero or y is zero. Those are the axes. And so this is what it actually looks like. It looks like a cross. Above the axes where x is zero or y is equal to zero, the function has a height one. Everywhere else it has a height zero. Now, I really love this function because as we're gonna see, it helps to illustrate some of the core ideas of multivariate calculus. So let's try to answer the same questions. Is this function continuous? And does it have partial derivatives? Now, just looking at the function makes it appear that it's not continuous. Indeed, it's going from zero and then it jumps right up to one. And that kind of jump we think of as something being not continuous. But perhaps we should try and actually state that a little bit more precisely with limits because what is continuity? It means that the limit exists and the function exists and they are equal. So let's compute the limits of this particular thing. I want to take first the limit going to zero, zero of this function f of x, y. Now, when we first introduced limits in this multivariable calculus course, we saw that we could do limits along a bunch of different paths. And so I'm gonna first begin with a path which is going along y equal to zero. This, in other words, this is just the x-axis. Now. Along this path, if you're going along the x-axis, well, that function is one everywhere where y is zero. So according to this path, this is just taking the limit of the function one, and of course the limit of the function one is just, well, one. So the point is that this path does not see the anywhere where the function is zero. It only sees where the function is one, and so it appears that the limit is one. Okay, let me do a different path though. Now I'm gonna take the path which has changed to be y equal to x instead. So these are numbers like one, one, half, half, point one, point one. But what is f of a number like point one, point one? Well, anywhere that was not an axis, we saw that it was zero. So along this path y equal to x, it's going to be in fact zero everywhere, except for this case when x is actually equal to zero and y is actually equal to zero, which the limit doesn't care about. And so as a result, what is this limit of? This is the limit of things that are zero and less just zero. Okay, so what's the big takeaway here? Now we've seen that indeed we have two different paths and the limit along those two different paths gives two different values. And so the limit does not exist. If the limit does not exist, the function is not continuous because continuity meant that the limit existed and equaled the function value. 
So in this case, we have proven that no, it matches our intuition, it is not continuous. Okay, so if what was true in calculus one was true here, we would therefore be able to immediately say that the partial derivatives did not exist. That's what we might hope for. Fortunately, it's not quite so simple. So let's try to study the partial derivatives and see what happens to them. So let's do the partial derivative with respect to x first. So the partial derivative of f with respect to x and at the point zero, zero. So that's what the vertical bar means, evaluated at zero, zero. The definition of partial derivatives, as we've seen previously, is, well, it's analogously a limit and in this limit, the function is evaluated at a couple different places. In the y coordinate, well, it's just zeros everywhere. So, so in other words, the partial with respect to x is thinking of as the y value fixed and only changing the x. But then likewise, if you focus in instead on the x components, well, the x components change. The one point we're evaluating has an x component of zero, and the other point has an x component of zero plus h. It's being shifted by this little amount h that we're taking the limit of and assuming is going to zero. So this is our definition. Now, let's actually try to compute this. In this case, the x component actually doesn't matter because the y component is zero in both cases. And this function is a function that if the y component is zero, then the function has a height of one. So both of these expressions on the top are just the values of one. This is just the limit of one minus one. One minus one is zero. It's a little bit weird. You might think this is a zero over zero, but it's not quite the same. It's, it's a true zero on the top and then something getting closer and closer to zero. So at any value of h that's non-zero, then we have zero divided by something. Either way, it's always just going to be equal to zero. So this is surprising now. The partial derivative exists. It's equal to a specific number. And one of the ways that I think about this is what does a partial derivative see? Well, it fixes that value of y equal to zero, and then it imagines the x values changing. It's only looking as you change the x value. It's only looking down the x-axis. But then the function down the x-axis is really nice. It's just a constant one. And so the partial derivative from what it can see doesn't see any problems. To look at this a bit more visually, I've plotted the point, which is zero, zero, one. That's what happens when you plug zero, zero into f, you get a height of one. And then likewise, if I plug in the point h0, that also has a height of 1. So those two points, I can put them down. And then what do I think of the partial derivative? The partial derivative is the slope of that secant line between these two points, and the limit as h goes to 0. But because these two points lie on a horizontal line, the slope between them is just 0. And another argument why this partial derivative makes sense to just be 0. Okay. That's the partial derivative with respect to x. The same argument applies for the partial derivative with respect to y. Nothing really changes except for the location of the h. So now the location of the h is in the y component. It's the x component that's fixed at zero and the y that's got that zero plus h. But by the same argument, it's one minus one and a limit of zero. So both the partial derivative with respect to x and the partial derivative with respect to y, both of those exist and are equal to zero. Okay, so what's our takeaway? We now have an example here that is discontinuous at zero, zero, but the partials exist at zero, zero. And so this is a different relationship. The relationship from single variable calculus that a discontinuous function meant it was not differentiable is not exactly valid, at least at the level of partial derivatives. It can be discontinuous, but the partial derivatives exist. So what this really motivates us is that we need a better notion of differentiability. And that is exactly what we will define in the next video. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments and we will do some more math in the next video.